Hey everybody, if you're just a beginning accounting student, you probably have one burning question that you will need to answer, and that is, what's up with these T-accounts? Well, here's what the answer is. A T-account is a simplified, shortcut way of representing the general ledger. Now, the general ledger is a database of, that has all of the information from all the transactions of the business, and that data is expressed in terms of debits and credits, and it's itemized or broken down by account. Now, here's a good way to visualize what a general ledger is. Think of a telephone book. You're holding a telephone book in your hand. The first page of that book is the cash account, and it shows all the debits and credits of transactions that affected cash. The second page, that's your accounts receivable. The third page, your inventory. Fourth page, your notes payable. Fifth page, common stock, etc. So, that's the way a general ledger is organized in terms of accounts. And keep in mind also that around the world in all accounting systems, accounts are always ordered in standardized order. They always come assets first, liabilities second, then equity, then revenues, then expenses. Now here's how it all works. When a transaction takes place, we record that transaction as a journal entry. Now let's say for example, that I render service to my customer and my customer pays me $100. Let's record that in a journal entry, okay? Now, first of all, cash has come into my business, and when cash comes in, we're going to debit the cash account. Debit cash for $100. Second of all, I have earned revenue, and we know that revenues are always credits, so I'm going to credit service revenue for $100. Okay, very good. Now, from time to time, what we do is we transfer this debit and credit information from the journal entries into the general ledger. And we're going to represent that general ledger in the simplified form of the T-account. We call that posting. Here's how it works. For example, here we'll look at this debit to cash of $100 and we'll post that to the cash account, showing the debit on the left side. Remember, debit's on the left, credit's on the right. Then we'll take this credit of 100 to the revenue account and we'll post that to the revenue account. Debits on the left, credits on the right. Okay. Now let's take another example. Let's say next I pay a utility bill for 50 bucks. I pay out 50 bucks. Let's analyze that transaction and let's record it in a journal entry. First of all, I've incurred an expense. Expenses are always debits. So I'm going to debit utility expense for 50 bucks. Expenses are always debits, right? And since cash went out of the company, we always credit cash when it goes out. I'm going to credit cash for 50 bucks. Now, when I post this journal entry to the ledger, here's how it works. This debit of 50 to expense gets transferred into the expense account. Notice on the left-hand side of the debits. And the credit of cash 50 goes to, transfers to, or posts to the cash account credits on the right. Okay, now at any point in time, we can shut down our system and calculate or update the balances in any or all of the accounts. Let me give you an example. Let's say, let's just focus on the cash account alone, okay? Now let's say after these transactions, we have another transaction where $200 of cash comes into the company. So that's going to debit cash for $200 and credits to some other accounts. And then later on, we pay out two additional payments of $25 each. So that will be showing up in the cash account like this. Now, we want to stop and calculate the current balance in the cash account. Okay? Very easy to do with T accounts. Here's how it works. First of all, let's look at the debit side. We have $300 of debits. And let's look at the credit side. We have $100 of credits. Now we take the total debits and credits and we net them together. Now remember folks, netting means to combine things together. And you can see when we combine debits of 300 and credits of 100, we get a net debit balance of 200. Now because it's a debit balance, we're going to show it like this. Down below the line on the left hand side, we have a net debit balance of $200. Okay. Now, the ending balances or the current balances in various accounts can either be a net debit balance or a net credit balance. But there is a general guideline because groups of accounts have what we call 
normal balances. Now, to understand this, we want to go back to the rules of debits and credits that we learned back in Lecture 3. But it boils down to this. Assets, by their nature, are debits, so asset accounts like cash should normally have a debit balance. Liabilities and equity should normally have credit balances. Revenues are always credits, so they should have a credit balance. And expenses are always debits, so they should have debit balances too. Now, later on in your accounting course, you're going to learn about some specific exceptions to that general rule, but let's not worry about that right now. Now, the general ledger, remember, is a detailed source of information on all the transactions of the business, whereas T accounts is just kind of a shortcut, uh, back-of-the-envelope way of representing that information, and we can use that to analyze transactions. It's a very, very handy tool. I'm going to give you an example, and I'm going to take down this page, and we'll go to the second page here. Oops, there we go. You can see I didn't rehearse this part, did I? Not too well. Okay, now let's say, for example, let's say, for example, that I have an employee of my company that I want to send on a training course. Now, that employee is going to incur travel expenses, so my company is going to give her a travel advance. Give her $100 travel advance so she can use to pay her travel expenses. Now, how am I going to record that transaction? First of all, I'm paying out $100. So that's going to be a credit to cash of $100. And I'm going to debit $100 to an account called Employee Receivable. That means that that money is receivable back to my company from the employee unless and until that employee accounts for it in full. Okay? So there's the first transaction. Now, a day later, the employee goes to the um, training session. She incurs travel expenses, hotel, meals, whatever, 80 bucks. Has 20 bucks left over. She will prepare an expense report, attach the receipts. Now, we issued her an advance of 100 she spent 80 she owes the company back 20 bucks so with her expense report she's going to pay back 20 bucks now we're going to analyze it using t accounts this way first of all the company is receiving 20 bucks we're going to debit cash for 20 second of all those receipts evidence total expenses travel expenses of 80 bucks expenses are always debits right so we're going to debit travel expense 80 now We've got total debits of $100. We now need total credits of $100 as well. And so we're going to ask, how does this affect the receivable account? Well, notice now my employee has accounted in full for the amount of the advance and returned the balance. If we credit the employee receivable account and calculate the ending balance there, we will see that that account has been cleared to zero. And that makes sense, doesn't it? So you see how we use the T accounts to analyze transactions and to determine which accounts are affected. Now, I have two takeaways for you for this lesson. Number one, remember that your general ledger, all of the data within your general ledger, is always expressed in terms of debits and credits. And remember also that at every moment in time within the general ledger, the total of all your debits is always equal to the total of all your credits. Okay, hope that helped. See you next time.